insert generic greeting here. Okay, I'm gonna address the elephant in the room straight away. Yes, I do have a bus cut and it is green. And you're probably wondering, what the hell happened? Well, a lot has happened, but also not really anything. And it's not really relevant for this video at all, so I'm just gonna skip over that. But anyway, with the year coming to an end, I always felt like it would be a good idea to have some sort of a rewind video to look into my old content and just see how I and my content have grown and developed over time. How I got more confident, how I changed things up and things like that. Which would also be a really good video for people who found my content later and haven't really gone back to watch my old content. Because this video could inspire you to go seek out all the videos of mine and watch them. But before we get into that, I first of all want to thank every single of my subscribers. Because honestly, you are the reason I am still creating content. And the idea that there are people who spend hours of their free time watching things I've created is just insane to me. Over the time, there's also been a massive amount of people that have been involved with my channel, behind and in front of the camera. And all of you guys are the reason why I was able to create the content I've created. So a very big thank you to Stefan, Josh, Angelica, Jackie, Antonius, Julia, Theresa, Marcel, Veronica, Moana, Dana, Chada, Svea, and Aurelia. 14 people is a lot of people, holy shit. Some of them have only been around for like one video, but still, all of their work matters a lot. But with all of that being said, let's get right into my old content. For the first part of this, I'm completely gonna ignore all of my travel vlogs, because they were all filmed way before I started filming in my apartment, and since all of the material was technically old, there wasn't any improvements I could make on that, so there's no noticeable growth happening in that, which is why I don't think they're that relevant for now. But after I got back from the summer trip in 2019, right in the beginning of October, I placed down my camera and I started filming story times. And let's just say customers and coworkers alike can be everything from wonderful, lovely people to being actually super rude, to being downright weird. And I've got a couple of stories about that that I'm going to share with you today. And I started off with talking about my experiences in the fast food industry. And then I followed with a lot of story times about my experiences in London, which I called the London Diaries. And as far as I'm aware from the like 30 people that were there, only like three or four got the offer to be hired. So it was also during the time where I had barely work and where I was very desperate to find a job and I was living in this three people bedroom for all of the time and for the first couple of days Carla and Paul were staying in the same room as I did and this whole thing went on for months like I really didn't get a lot of work anymore and while editing wise those are definitely not my best videos I still think they are in some level entertaining and they do show in a way that I was still shy in talking to the camera there's a lot of moments where I look away, don't really look straight into the camera. In between I started editing weirdly where I started cutting all the breaths out but I didn't leave the time where I did breathe in and just made it silent. I just cut the whole thing out which made really weird jump cuts all the time. The lighting was terrible, I'm just gonna say that, and the whole setup, the angle my camera had, I hate that looking back. I really hate it. And, you know, everybody starts somewhere, but if I compare it to now, I'm like, what was I thinking? But other than that, there's nothing really that distinguishes any video in that era from each other, since I used overall the same editing styles throughout. Noticeable about that time, however, is that I did let myself be inspired by a trend that was really popular on YouTube at the time, which had me use a lot of face zooms and distortion effects and stuff like that over these videos. And then mid-November came in and I did my collab with Jackie about trying Chinese snacks. And this is literally where the whole food topic for my channel started from. Hey guys, so today I'm here with Jackie. Hey! And we decided to test some Asian candy. What's potato flour? Flour made of potato? Yeah, it's like, yeah, potato flour. <laughs> <laughs> we originally planned to do a video on Japanese candy and just went to the Asian store and bought a lot of random stuff. And once we got back to my apartment, 
we realized that basically none of the products we had was actually Japanese. That's how my first candy video became about China. And I feel like especially back then in those kind of videos, I just acted a bit more freely and a bit more laid back because I didn't really concentrate as much on speaking clearly, if that makes sense. Then December of 2019 came in and that was when I filmed my gender-based marketing video. And this video, in comparison to all the content I did before that, was a bit more serious and a bit more concise because this is a topic that's really important to me and it is politically charged, it can be seen as controversial, but I still stand by everything I said in that video. And I still really like the video, even though, again, it has the same setup and editing problems the videos before had. A good example of peer pressure in that matter comes in when you start talking about movies and series. Now let's say there's this group of six guys, and five of them say, Oh, The Vampire Diaries is a women's TV series, and as a guy you shouldn't be watching that. Do you think the sixth guy that actually enjoys watching it would admit doing so anymore? Ironically, it's also the last video I filmed in 720p, because after that there was a two-week break where I finally got a computer to edit, and this is the sole reason why my videos until then were in 720p, I did have a shitty laptop and that laptop was completely unable to render anything bigger than that. And even with that, it always crashed, it always deleted files I had, it was really, really frustrating and made editing a terrible chore. And then with my computer, things got a lot better. So what followed was a chain of travel vlogs. Continuing with January of 2020, so this is finally, you know, this year. In the very beginning, I did a story time about the time I lived in a fraternity house in Germany. So three years ago, I made the mistake of moving into a fraternity house. And this is still to this date my most watched video. Whoever the people were that found that video didn't like the fact that someone else wouldn't like their lifestyle as much. It has like a 90% dislike ratio and a lot of hate comments. I deleted a lot of them. I just left, you know, the ones that weren't entirely like questionable. Actually, quite a few people I know think this is one of the funniest videos I ever made, which makes this entire thing even much more of a shame. To show them the underwear full of feces and the, like shake it around and then it fell off and the feces fell onto the floor. Dead inside, I'm dead inside, dead inside. Who, who does that? I also uploaded my last part of the collaboration with Jackie, which this time was the Korean snack video. Come some Come some Come some Okay, this is really good. <laughs> <laughs> really weird. Which is also where the whole idea of people throwing food at me in those kind of videos came from. And I did stick with that ever since. <laughs> Insert generic greeting here. <laughs> Insert generic greeting here. I also made my travel diary video, and that's a video I was very, very self-conscious about for a very long time. Because I always felt like it was boring whenever I started editing it, so I stopped again. Today I do think it is quite an entertaining video, but, you know, I was really struggling with it. And I think if people haven't watched the London Diaries Storytime series, I feel like this video is the best entry point into it, which is what it was conceived to be. And it is also, I think, my least watched video because just the way it's set up doesn't really make it easy to be found. So there's a lot of names that I have no idea who they even are. And it's like, who's Tony? Who is to- what? Who's Jake? I don't know who Kendall is. Who's Paul? Then in mid-February, I posted one of my best and most important videos to date. The polyglot video. Bratwurst <laughs> 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 That video basically was the starting point of what I would call Lemon 2.0, 
because for that video I got soft boxes, so way more professional lighting, which I'm also using right now. I got this background map. I basically changed my whole story time setup from the couch to this area at the table with the chair, which just looks a lot more professional. It was the video I filmed the longest on, like we literally took five hours with all the changes and with deciding what I could say in each language and stuff like that. I also feel like it is one of my most entertaining videos and I will always preach that video out there because it is fantastic in my opinion. <laughs> vamos, vamonos, vamos. <laughs> Norsk? Fy fan! This video is also the birthplace of me saying insert generic greeting here, which immediately replaced my opening videos with different languages that I did before. Sadulika! Siastok! And I just feel like this is a lot more of my brand now. Insert generic greeting here. Insert generic greeting here. Insert generic greeting here. In such an Eric greeting here. In such an Eric greeting here. Sadly, after that I didn't manage to push out as much content as before anymore, especially because of the current world situation. When I originally posted like four to eight videos per month, it suddenly became two most of the time, which I still really hate, but you know. In March, I did the Korean subscription box video, which kind of kicked off my whole subscription box chaos uh, maybe if you eat it, then it's, it melts like sand or something. <laughs> that, is a, that is an interesting metaphor. Yeah. And around that time, and even months before, we actually filmed a lot of other subscription boxes. Hence why you're seeing a lot of them on the floor in the beginning of that video. Me and the box! Are you kidding me? <laughs> but here's the problem. Because I already had the Lemon 2.0 setup at this point, I didn't really want to release older videos with worse setups that looked really dark or really yellow and stuff like that. Hence why I do have like three to four film videos that I maybe never will release, who knows. Maybe I'm changing my mind, but at this point it looks like that's not gonna happen. It also marks the first appearance of Moana and especially Veronica on my channel where the latter has been around quite a lot afterwards. Notable is also the Russian border police story time, which is, in my opinion, one of my most crazy stories from travels I have, like as a whole, so you should definitely go and watch that video if you haven't. We drove into the middle of nowhere, and there was like this massive amount of parking garages where we parked, and I was like, okay, where the hell are we? Then we walked to this building, which was completely fenced with like a steel fence. But it wasn't one of those where you could look through, it was like basically steel walls. The building had no marking on it whatsoever, so there was no indication on where we actually are and what the hell this kind of place is. In April, I then brought out a new concept where I'm combining multiple story times into one. And that was kind of based off of my very first video where I told all these different stories from working in the fast food industry. Just that now it was completely based on travels. Now the thing is, up until that point I've always been afraid of ladders. In the 19 years of my life, I never went onto a ladder and now I was confronted with the situation where I had to go down. Even though the people got evicted anyway. So now there's just a handful of people living there and up until that point I had no bad experiences with it. And then Prague happened. In May I made my first American candy video together with Chada, who was new on the channel at that time. <laughs> More notable in that month is my video about the Soyoung situation. And to me personally, this is still one of my most important videos because the message in it is so important. And I do realize that my words in this video have been misinterpreted quite a lot. And I can't really do anything about that. But I would never, under any circumstances, take this video down. Because I still stand by everything I said in that video. But looking back, this is definitely the most controversial video I ever filmed and probably will film anywhere in the near future.
But in reality, I don't think that's the case. The way she's acting, as I pointed out before, is mostly based off of Korean marketing. Plus the fact that if a fish would jump around in your kitchen, wouldn't you react a bit shocked in June? I finally did the first travel vlog that was filmed with a camera stabilizer. It's like there, there's plants here that might like burn your skin. So it's it's a fun place to walk down at. I'm not sure why we are here. And this marks a hefty difference from the travel vlogs I did before about Azerbaijan and Iran. Because we didn't have a stabilizer back then. Which is also why I'm not including clips of these vlogs, because they're just shaky and I kind of feel like it still kind of messes with the watchability of a video to show them. And I don't think they're bad videos. I think you should definitely watch them if you want to, but you should be aware that it's kind of shaky, because, you know, walking around with a camera on its own doesn't work out as, as well as you would hope it would. Another thing I did in the very same month is the Korean spicy noodle video, which is one of my most funny videos, and it was entirely based on a spontaneous idea. Oh wait, I have like... One of these. I'm not sure if the noodles are thick enough. I guess. <laughs> Wait, I didn't even start. Where are the fish? <laughs> <laughs> oh and I think spicy pain has the potential to become like an inside joke once I'm a bigger creator. Spicy pain, dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have to calm down. <laughs> Notable in that video as well was the also spontaneous decision to suddenly sit like at the front end of the couch instead of the back end, which did make a huge difference in looks, and that's why why I kept that in every video I filmed after that. And this was also the first major step towards Lemons 3.0, which I'm getting into in like a couple minutes probably. I don't really have anything particular to say about the videos from July and August, which have been the hitchhiking story times, my experiences with working in fast food during the pandemic, which I think would give you quite a bit of insight into, you know, that side of things. Also, you would have people that, when asked to order the electronic terminal, they would say no word and straight out just leave the restaurant. I don't get people lately. My ruined road trip video. But in the meantime, I used money I didn't have to buy myself a drone. The Japanese KitKat video, which was the last time Moana was in my channel thus far. I'm so confused right now. Yeah, shame. Mm hmm Like very much sweet potato and a tiny bit of chocolate on top of it. But too much chocolate to make it actually taste good. It's more, more like, mm, that's weird. Yeah. I don't know, I'm not a big fan of sweet potato. I've eaten it like once before. And also the turkey video, which again has a lot of shaky footage, so I'm not gonna include that yet again. And then from September on, things finally took a better turn for myself again which made me able to, from this point on, always have at least four videos per month, which made me then feel a lot better about myself as a content creator. So for example, the four videos in September were my decluttering my apartment video. There's like a ton of miscellaneous stuff where I'm not even sure where this remotely belongs to, so I feel like... My exploring an abandoned industrial area video. my Indian candy tasting video and my gachapon video. And again, I don't really have too much to say about any of these videos, besides the fact that especially this selection of videos this particular month has shown how much of a variety channel my channel has become. If you, for example, take these four videos in comparison to content I made months before that, 
you can already tell that I've been much more confident and, you know, creating content has been a lot more normalized for me at this point, which, you know, makes these videos just better. I haven't played Pokemon in way too long, which you probably can tell. <laughs> and here's the next smaller one. A really white cat. And it has a cute little plant next to it, which I really like. I liked quite a few of the products. The chips were really nice. However, they were really, really spicy, both of them. She's still fighting with it. Both the jelly things were actually really good. Yeah. That trend has been continued then in October with the Canadian candy tasting, the gendered advent calendars, which brought back the whole topic of gender-based marketing that I spoke about so many months before that. You could label this completely differently and still have the same fragrances and just have the title more a description of the fragrances you use, like Winter Bakery or something instead of Women. And this could be more like Forest instead of Man. My cautionary travel story times video, which I released on October, even though it wasn't really, you know, relevant for Halloween, but... And then also the socks video, which was the first video actually labeled as Lemons 3.0, because that was the point where I finally completed my new setup, which meant I had a tapestry, but I also had smart lights, which, you know, rounded up the whole lighting situation. And I think the lighting now looks better in most of these videos, at least a tiny bit. Ironically, quite a few videos after that were then again labeled as Lemon 2.0, because there is the common case on my channel that things are filmed not in order, which means there might be sometimes a step back in, you know, the quality of the setup and things like that, because I obviously still want to release things that I filmed out of order. Something notable in October as well is that my not travel videos have become more long, more towards the 20 minute mark, which wasn't really planned, but a lot of these videos just worked out better to be a bit longer than before. November 2020 is when I then went all out and suddenly published seven videos, which didn't happen ever since the end of 2019. Those seven videos included the videos about Montreal, Münzenberg and Hessenpark, which was a whole new approach to my travel vlogs, because I originally planned to make videos on German states that would have been a lot more long format and showed a lot of different places at once. But because things didn't work out in the summer as originally planned, I decided to instead make very short videos on singular places, which would then be easier to search up and, you know, maybe expose me to a new audience. So that's how you got those videos all in a row, which probably wasn't the best planning, but, you know, it just happened. Also in that month, I had my videos on tea from all over the world and on a loot crate alternative, both of these videos have been based on very spontaneous ideas as well. Because I bought a loot crate once, I didn't really plan to make a video on it, but then I suddenly decided that I want to make a video on it anyway, even though it didn't really fit what I did before on my channel. And the tea video also marks the beginning of something I'm planning to do more and more in the future, which basically is videos that I filmed over the course of several weeks. And I'm currently in the process to do two more of those videos, which should have been released this year, but it didn't really work out. And this is also where you're gonna see the hair change a bit more gradually and not as suddenly as you did now. Then there's the Haze music video, which literally was based off of me being bored and not knowing what to do. And then I realized that because I filmed so many videos with smoke bombs for my outros, I could maybe use them for something. And what became later the Hayes music video was just meant to be something to show a few of my friends that really liked the smoke clips. But then I posted it unlisted and tweeted it at Tessa Violet, who sang the song. And I didn't really think she'd ever see the tweet. But like 10 minutes later I had a comment from her and that's when I decided that I kind of want to make the video public now since she apparently even liked it. So that's why you have that video now on my channel. And then lastly, there's the New Zealand candy tasting video. And I honestly think this is the best of my candy tasting videos, especially because the chemistry on camera was just really good. And the opening of that video is one of the funniest things on my channel, honestly. 
Auf Englisch heißt das New Zealand. <lacht> hey Google, what is the adjective for New Zealand? Sorry, I didn't understand, but I found something related. Do you want to know how do you describe someone in New Zealand? Yes. According to wikipedia.org, following the Second World War of 1939 to 1945, the term gradually became attributed to all New Zealanders, and today throughout the world they are referred to as Kiwis, as well as often referring to themselves that way. And then December 2020 rolled around which originally had nine videos planned in, which is a lot and obviously didn't work out that way. But, you know, being ambitious isn't bad. The videos I did manage to finish were, first of all, three more travel vlogs on Koshem, Brem and Hattingen, which don't really differ a lot from the travel vlogs of November. I just think the whole concept is technically really good. But I don't really have the audience that's looking for that, so I'm not sure how many of those kind of videos are still coming in the future. Other than that, I did my video on asking embassies for flags, which for a while I wasn't even sure if that's as good of a video anymore. But at the same time, I also contacted so many embassies to do that, so I felt like I should do a video on it regardless. And then lastly, I also made my second video on American candy which was planned for months on end, and it's also bringing back an old video of mine. And I feel like every time I do a candy tasting video, it might get somebody into binging all of my old candy tasting videos, which would be amazing to happen, so you know. And there you have it. That was basically a short history of all of my 60 videos. I hope I didn't forget to mention anything important. And I hope this was interesting to watch and see my graduate change into becoming a more confident content creator. And I mean, I don't think I have to point that out, but if you do like travel vlogs, candy tastings, story times, hauls, unboxings, or just random shit I suddenly come up with, and you're not yet subscribed to my channel, maybe this is a wake-up call to go check out the rest of my channel and maybe even subscribe to stay up to date with all of my upcoming content in 2021. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and comment down below any of your favorite moments from all of my so far YouTube career. I would be very interested to hear what different people's favorite videos or clips or moments or things I did were. Also, just because I keep forgetting to mention that, even though I would never expect that from anyone, if you do want to support me financially, Patreon and Coffee are linked down below. Additionally, there's also my Discord server if you want to join my small growing community and, you know, talk about my content or just talk to me in general or to other people who watch my content. Other than that, I hope to see you around in the next video.